Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Monday, March 15th, 2021, and today we're going to be talking about the COVID-19 vaccination tracker. Uh, this information that I'm using is from the Bloomberg website, but I'm going to be using a number of sources ranging from 538 to the New York Times. But uh, if you remember, Joe Biden made a promise uh, continuously after he was elected that he would get 100 million shots done in the first 100 days of his presidency. Now, this is a tweet from December 22nd, 2020, and I'm sure we all know Twitter was a very popular platform of the previous president, but President Biden has used it uh, to pretty much outline what his plans are for uh, the country and pretty much just to post pictures of himself walking along with Kamala Harris. Just as a sort of a, a funny thing that I've noticed, a lot of walking pictures, right? Uh, but looking at these tweets pretty much very consistently, this is just one out of many where Joe Biden had made this promise even beyond this through the press, through his uh, speeches, that 100 million shots will be done within the first 100 days of his administration. And it looks as if we have already passed that. Now, if you're wondering how far we are actually into his administration, I can tell you we're 46 days away from being the first 100 days. We're only 54 days into the Biden presidency. Keep in mind, nearly 1,460 days are in the total presidency, actually maybe around 1,450. So we're making tremendous progress. Right now, 107 million doses have been administered. He did not say 100 million people will be fully vaccinated. He said 100 million shots. That means first and second doses combined. But by the end of his first 100 days, we will reach a point where 100 million Americans will likely be fully vaccinated or at least uh, maybe possibly even 150, 140 million Americans that have gotten one dose. And if you look at the Pfizer efficacy, Moderna efficacy, uh, Johnson & Johnson efficacy after the first dose, or sometimes it's only one for the case of Johnson & Johnson, after around a few weeks, you actually have a very high level of tolerance to the COVID-19 vaccination. So look uh, to the COVID-19 virus. So looking at the vaccination tracker, we are doing very well as a country. We are doing very, very well. We actually had a very successful day on March 13th where we had $4.6 million, not million dollars, million doses administered. Now, this is kind of misleading. It was actually a data dump where they took the uh, vaccination numbers at a later time than they normally did. So we're looking around actual numbers of being 2.9 million that day. It was just a sort of just a data error that didn't roll over to the data uh, the Sunday, which is now down to uh, 1.4 million. But Looking at the overall seven-day average, we're at roughly 2.4, 2.5 million, which is a very good point, a very good point for uh, our uh, country. You know, just looking at the vaccinations over time, you know, prior to Biden entering into office, you know, on his first day, we had entered into a point where we were around, you know, nearly a million people uh, getting the vaccine every single day, you know, nearly a million. It wasn't until around a few days into his presidency that we actually broke one million, and now we're nearing 3 million. So I think that we are at a very good point. And as a result, well, since this video is going to be talking about the electoral implications of such, Joe Biden and the Democratic Party are going to receive a boost. Now, following the COVID-19 relief bill uh, passing, we didn't actually see Joe Biden's approval rating uh, you know, go too high. Right now, it's about around 13.6% difference between those who approve and those who disapprove, which is actually not too bad of a point, considering that Donald Trump was never at this point not once in his entire presidency. And after February 2017, Donald Trump had never been approved of as president. So Joe Biden so far is not an unpopular president. He's at a high point. But keep in mind, you know, Obama was unpopular for a very long time, a majority of both of his terms, and ultimately ended up winning two elections. So popularity rating isn't always an indicator. It was the case for 2020 with Donald Trump, but it was not the case in 2012 with Barack Obama. So we will see what it tells us for 2022. It ultimately depends on what the numbers are. But it looks as if so far that Joe Biden is sustaining a high approval rating. And we already know how divided this country is. Joe Biden certainly did not win. 13.6% more of the popular vote than Donald Trump. He won it by 4.5%. But it looks as if that means that there are some independent and Republican voters that may have backed Trump that are now in support of Joe Biden, at least in terms of how they approve of his presidency. That doesn't mean they would vote for him or vote for Democrats, but it also means that, you know, looking at this approval, it's not, it means that Joe Biden is just ultimately right now a popular president. But I'm not going to say this is the highest approval rating we've seen. If we compare it to previous presidents like Barack Obama, it's lower. The only president that is actually higher at this point in time is Donald Trump. It's in fact lower than George H.W. Bush, Barack Obama, George W. Bush, Bill Clinton, uh, right around where Ronald Reagan was, lower than Jimmy Carter, uh, higher than Gerald Ford. But we're talking about that's in the 1970s. That's not really uh, too important. So looking at the uh, 
I guess, modern election uh, or modern political history approval rating, Joe Biden seems to be underperforming almost every single president with the exception of one. But we are much more polarized at this point than we were uh, five years ago, which I find to be very interesting. It definitely was just uh, a combination of the media and a combination of both parties with very insightful rhetoric. And specifically now, I would say, um, with a lot of the election fraud claims that have divided this country to a point where some people don't even think that uh, Joe Biden had fairly won the election without voter fraud. And, you know, some people raise the counterpoint that didn't the Democrats say that Russia colluded in the 2016 election? I mean, it's very different to uh, suggest that there was collusion between Russian operatives that were documented in certain places. Ultimately, it was found that there was no collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia. But that's very different than accusing uh, millions of voters of voting illegally or millions of voters that uh, voted by mail saying that they didn't vote fairly because they were afraid of a pandemic. It's very different, very different situation. So looking at Joe Biden's approval rating, it's holding strong. And there's a reason for that. So this $100 million, uh, one, no, I don't know why I keep saying that. I'm sorry. Uh, 100 million vaccine shots in the first 100 days. This was a goal we knew he would meet. This was a goal that health officials knew he would meet. But it makes for good politics. 100 million in 100 days sounds like a lot. That's roughly one third of the United States population. But it was completely doable. But that's just good politics. They knew exactly what they were doing. And now it looks as if he's promising 150 setting the goal, moving the goalpost to a point that he knows he's going to meet. Based off of our current weekly uh, numbers and based off our current daily, daily averages, it looks as if we're averaging around 2.386 million shots per day. That means first and second doses combined, which means, which means when we combine that with what we have already, 107 million, you multiply that by 46, 2.386, what do we reach? A total of 200 and 17 million shots done within the first 100 days. That is amazing. I am so excited to see our country re reopen. I'm sure many of you guys are as well. You know, reading this, what does this say? An estimated five months to cover 75% of the population with a two dose vac vaccine. If you remember my videos when I first covered this uh, topic, and I mean, I'm actually getting, I'm very happy to see this. I didn't even realize it was five months at this point. The first time I covered this on my channel with the Bloomberg, it was eight months. You know, a few weeks after it became dropped down to seven months. But looking at that from eight down to five, this was a very, very strong vaccine turnout campaign, a vaccine uh, rollout initiative that was eloquently done. And regardless of who is president, I would be praising them. If it was Trump, I would be praising him. But unfortunately for him, he's not the one who's going to get credit for this. President Trump will be remembered as the president under the pandemic and Joe Biden, the president under the vaccination rollout. That's the reality of our American political system. Whoever's at the top of the ticket will get the blame and the praise. So it really all depends on situations. But five months, I mean, this is great. This is honestly great. I know plenty of people who have been vaccinated. I know plenty of people that have been vaccinated. And honestly, that is an amazing thing. That is an amazing thing to think about. And, you know, looking at the COVID-19 cases, we are also seeing them decrease. We are also seeing them decrease uh, at a pretty strong level. And, you know, um, looking at this, I am honestly, at this point, I would say this is very good for the Biden administration. This was a very good point uh, for uh, Joe Biden's potential 2024 campaign for the Democratic Party in 2022 because we're seeing a decrease that that's all it is you know this is just a decrease and this 100 million dollars uh, this oh my gosh sorry 100 million uh, shots goal is being met so quickly and it's already been passed that he can move the goalpost and then beat it again and then move it and then beat it again we're talking possibly 200 million shots within the first 100 days doubling what he had promised and while it was completely attainable to the average American voter you're just going to see as this was a promise that was checked off. This was something that Biden did through his uh, vaccine rollout. And in many ways it was because the Biden administration acquired 200 million shots, but potentially by the end of April, you know, shots that were turned down by the Trump administration. You can read it all uh, in various news networks, regardless of what uh, partisan lean it is, or even, you know, apolitical news sources, you will find that the Trump administration did turn down Pfizer and Moderna for certain reasons. Um, partially because the military did not want to directly work with certain companies without being directly involved in the vaccine uh, in the vaccine contribution. You know, it's a very tricky, um, fine line to walk down here. But looking at this now, I mean, 
all of the credit is going to go to Joe Biden. Even if you do see uh, President Trump send out that press release, I don't know if you guys saw it, but he uh, said that he took credit. You know, he said that there would not be this vaccine out for five years if he was not president. I mean, honestly, it looks as if he's grasping for straws. And at the end of the day, the only person who's going to benefit from it is Joe Biden and the Democratic Party, especially ahead of a very tumultuous uh, midterm campaign season that we are already expecting to be uh, in such a bad point for uh, the Democratic Party, at least based off historical context, this election will likely be like no other because we will still be at a point where the pandemic will be very much in the minds of a lot of these voters. When you look at these Republicans that are retiring and not a single Democrat retiring, what does that tell us? That none of these Democrats are worried about losing re-election, but some of these Republicans might be. Or some of these Republicans no longer feel as if the Republican Party today is a representation of where they were elected. All of which shows uh, not so much good news for the Republican Party. If you look at 2014, a very phenomenal year for the Republican Party, the best year, I would argue, in the 21st century, we saw that the uh, Republican Party and the Democratic Party had equal, uh, had equal retirements. In 2010, nearly the same thing. But in 2022, based on what we're seeing, there seems to be only one Democratic incumbent that could retire, and he's from Vermont. That's it. The rest of these senators, you know, uh, when you're talking Maggie Hassan in New Hampshire, not going to retire. When you're talking Chris Van Hollen in Maryland, my home state, he's not going to retire. When you're talking about Michael Bennett in the state of Colorado, he's not going to retire. Catherine Cortez Masto, this is her first term. She's not going to retire. Mark Kelly, just elected. He's not going to retire. Raphael Warnock, no. Uh, you know, Tammy Duckworth, no. It's not going to happen. These retirements in some of these states, though, are from competitive states. Pennsylvania, Ohio, North Carolina. Even Alabama had a Democratic senator as recently as 2020. So when you look at some of these states, I'm not even trying to suggest Alabama is going to be competitive, but when you look at some of these states with the retiring incumbents, there could be some warning signs here that some of these Republicans feel as if they may be vulnerable or that their modern GOP no longer represents what they want it to, which sort of indicates that the entire party is going to remain committed to being for Donald Trump, with Donald Trump, uh, and based on Donald Trump's beliefs and Donald Trump's rhetoric. And that's what I think the future of the GOP, at least as of right now, looks like. And ultimately, that's going to hurt their chances. So overall, what I think is that this vaccine rollout is going to boost Joe Biden's approval rating ahead of the 2022 midterm elections. The COVID-19 cases are decreasing in a lot of states. There actually are a few states, though, that are increasing, which you see uh, cases are high and staying high. But you can see that they all pretty much overcame this peak. This was around uh, after the holiday season, December, January, February, and now it's down to a pretty good point. But some of them are still high and they still need to decrease. They also have states where cases are higher but going down. So what you'll notice is that states that were previously some of the hot spots in the country, for example, Florida, they are steadily decreasing. That's awesome. That is awesome to see. And then when you look at the states where the cases are lower but going up, you see that the Northern Mariana Islands, narrow increase. I mean, it's just a small state. Uh, it's not a small state. Uh, a small part of the country. Uh, it's not a state, but uh, very small in terms of population. So not much to see. Missouri narrow increase and then some of these states have low cases uh, and then they are staying low so i want to see where uh, maryland is right here so our cases are lower and staying low so pretty much a lot of these states have overcome some of the worst parts of the entire pandemic and it looks as if the finish line is five months away it looks as if herd immunity will be reached in five months according to bloomberg that's down from eight months from what we saw you know the first time i covered this and you know that was around a month ago you know, eight months from then would have been way further out than five months from now. So looking at five months, we were at a very good point. This is a very good point. I think that this is a, a, a because looking at the vaccine rollout, I would say initially it didn't look too hopeful. It did not look too hopeful based off the amount of Americans getting vaccinated every day. But now we're starting to see the infrastructure get built up in certain states, mass vaccination clinics, um, a six flags near me where people would go normally, you know, just to the amusement park is now. Uh, a vaccine spot. And that's awesome. You know, it's awesome to see that some of these public places are being utilized in a very positive way. When you see the uh, stadiums that were previously just ghost towns because there was no um, no sports and then there was uh, there were no crowds, no events. Now it's being used for vaccinations. This is good. This is good news for our country. And overall, uh, as a result, anytime an American thinks that there's good news, they are going to very much, almost all of them are going to attribute it to whoever's in office. And at this point in time, the Democrats have the trifecta in the right place at the right time, and they're going to receive a lot of this credit entering into 2022. So while Joe Biden's approval rating may not exponentially increase because of how polarized we are as a nation, it still has actually incrementally increased from where it was a few days ago. But 
Overall, I think that his approval rating will hold steady. And plus 13 is at a very good point. Actually, plus 14 as of today is at a very good point relative to where Donald Trump was for the entirety of his presidency and much better, certainly much better than his final day. We're talking a 30 point gap between Trump's final day and Joe Biden today. So that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2022 midterm election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all tomorrow. Nope, not tomorrow, later today.